Good morning. Thank you for being here today. Beautiful day outside. It was, it was, it's really pretty actually. And there was this period of time when we were, everybody was just beginning to get here and the clouds weren't quite as thick and so the sun was shining through the trees and it's just really pretty this morning. So I'm excited to be here with you this morning and to worship with you today. We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, the first one is that um, for everybody be, to be reminded and to know that there's back on the back table in the uh, fellowship area there are some hats. They've been donated. I heard that uh, Pastor Dave did some investigating and he was thoroughly convinced they're from Charlie. <laughs> so Charlie gave all those hats in the back there. He must have knitted for years since before he could walk maybe. Uh, so, but yeah, be, they're free, um, and so take a look back there and see if you can find a home for a hat. Um, Thanksgiving Day service is going to be November 22nd at 6. There will be a pie and social decorating Christmas time after, so be aware of that. And make, make arrangements if you'd like to be there. Um, please keep uh, Dean and his family in prayers. Uh, Shirley passed away uh, on Friday. Uh, services will be um, at the funeral home here in Ishpeming. Visitation at 12, service at 1, and that will be on Thursday. Uh, I wanted to make mention to let you know that our Advent services will, will be going through um, a series in, titled the, Mif the Misfits of the Cross. Uh, taking a look at some of the lineage of Christ. We will have a Christmas Day service. It'll be at 9.30. There will be no fellowship or Sunday school to follow, and it will be kind of an abbreviated service. Um, be aware of that. We want people to feel welcome to come if you would like to, but don't feel obligated to change family plans and arrangements if that's not something you would normally typically do. But for those of you who would like to participate and have a service on that uh, Sunday morning, we will have that. So, I don't have any further announcements. Okay then, so we will begin our service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we'll call on the worship team. Good morning again. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day. This day where you remind us that even though our sins are as crimson, your cleansing makes us white as snow. And we are so grateful for that. Thank you for the opportunity to come here and worship together as a family. Thank you, Lord, for being here in this building with us this morning. Open our hearts to hear your voice and bless Pastor Steve as he brings the message to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Lord, for the voices you've given us to raise to you in praise. And thank you for this time to worship you this morning, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll continue worshiping now as we come before the Lord and confess our sins with the confession here on the screen. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If this be your sincere confession, and if with penitent hearts you earnestly desire the forgiveness of your sins, God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, forgives you your sins. By the authority of God's word and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I can declare to you that God, through his grace, has forgiven you all your sins. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll call on the lector at this time. Let's look to the Lord for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of grace. Thank you for the call to worship. And so with that, we come boldly, yet humbly, to the foot of your cross, seeking the forgiveness and grace only found through your Son, Jesus. Lord, as we gather, we ask for tender hearts to receive the message you have prepared for us. Lead and guide us through each day. Allow us to rest firmly in the power of your love and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, also for our military, for each service member. Continue to keep them safe and secure. And thank you for each veteran and for their service to this country as well. I already think of uh, those among us dealing with the challenges of this life. Lord, we ask for your healing, comfort, and wisdom to to grow ever closer in our walk with you, Lord, uh, thinking of the Rushford family and lifting them up to you as well. Lord, help us to bring encouragement and hope to those in need. Lord, we pray for each area of ministry here today, that it would be pleasing to your sight. Also for Pastor and Jordan as they continue to serve this congregation, as well as their families. Lord, lead us and guide us now through your Holy Spirit's presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is found in Malachi, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Please stand if you're able for the reading of God's word. Reading in Jesus' name. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, said the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses and the statues and rules that I commanded him at Horb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Our epistle reading is found in Second Thessalonians, 
chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Also reading in Jesus' name. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we, had con- and we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Our gospel reading is found in Luke chapter 21. Reading verses 5 through 36, reading also in Jesus' name. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, And for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them, and when you hear wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for it will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. And let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it, for these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth, and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fading with the fear and foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look, a fig tree and all the trees, and soon they came out in leaf. You see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your heart be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day will come upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you have the strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Since our reading, let's confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
be seated. We'll call on the children at this time for the children's message. Good morning. What do you got here? I heard I heard it was tricky. She, she said, you're gonna have a hard time. Okay, is it is it on the bag or in the bag? In the bag. Oh what kind of bag is this? It is kind of big. There's two things in here. Let's see what we've been shopping. <laughs> you don't need the receipt, she says. Bananas. Oh. So this looks like insulation. It's tree lichen. I scraped it off the tree and I bought it. Tree lichen? Yeah. I didn't know werewolves grew on trees. <laughs> what is it? It's a fungusy thing. Fungus and algae. Fungusy thing. Well, what does it smell like? A fungus? I don't know. I, it doesn't smell like anything. It's all over the tree. Okay. Is it all so, what do you guys think? Brecken, what would you do? Where'd he go? What would I do? Yeah. Um, I already know what I want to do. I just was wondering if you. Uh, first, I would try to go deep in my brain and find out what a fungus is. So <laughs> <laughs> so he would. Somewhere in the Bible, you know, kind of Did you say I'll go deep in my brain? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. I'm a. Does this girl? By the way. Does this grow on the side of the tree that's in the dark, or is it in the light? Do you know? On the whole thing? I think it grows all over the tree. A lot of times, stuff like this grows where there's, there's not a lot of sun, right? Where there's more shade. It tends to be, but I guess I, I don't really know, because I don't really know. But I do know that there, the way this would, the way I plan to use this is that we have something very similar in our own life, right? That, that clings to us, it's growing on us, it's a fungus. Uh, I wonder if I should start, when my kids are bad, if that's why I should stop being a fungus. So, so I'm not sure that this has its purpose. I mean, I, I guess that maybe God intended for it to have a purpose. I don't know that it's a product of the fall, but... In, in our case, we have something that grows on us in our heart, kind of like on the dark side, right, of our heart. It's like a fungus, and it's covering up, covering up our heart and making us look and feel terrible. And, you know, that's our sin, right? And is that something that we always just do? What do I mean by that, you think? So there's two types of sin. Right? What kinds of sin are there? There's two types. No, no. Don't, no, not me, not me. James, what do you think? Oh, okay. I see what you're trying to do there, but. No, for sin, for sin, there's two different types of sin that we have. We have the kind that we do. We call that committed sin. But then there's another sin that we have. It's kind of been on our heart ever since we were born. <clears throat> Scripture says, in sin, my mother conceived me. I've been born in sin. And so the whole time, I've got a fungus that clings to me. And I don't have, uh, without looking to somebody, I need a Zeke. Right? I need a Zeke to come and scrape off the fungus off my heart and put it in a bag and bring it to pastor. <laughs> no. So, so who is our Zeke in our life that comes and scrapes off the fungus that's on our heart? Yeah. 
have, not just God. Now, you're right, because he is God, but let's be specific. Who is it? Specifically, yes. Who said that? Yeah, nice and loud. That's right. Jesus did that. Now, how do I receive that? How do, how do I get Jesus to come and scrape this off my heart? That's important, isn't it? I mean, if you want to be visited by Jesus so he can clean your heart off, then you got to know how that's done. How is that done? John, what do you think? Okay, pray and read the Bible. And, and what happens when we read the Bible? You're right. Faith comes by... Yeah, faith comes by hearing. Remember this? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Let's say it together. Ready? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. One more time. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So it's by our belief and our faith that as we believe, and, and yes, we can we pray too, right, John? And then God comes and he scrapes off the fungi on my heart and makes me clean again. And he makes me, what does he make me like? White as snow. So we can be thankful for the snow too, right? All right, so the next time you're out in the woods and you see fungus on a tree, say, thanks, Jesus and Zeke, right? <laughs> thanks, Zeke, for bringing the fungus to pastor so we can know that, so we can be reminded that when we see fungus, we don't have fungus on our heart when we believe. All right, good job. That was a kind of a tricky one. That was a little tricky. You were right. You were right. That was a tricky one. Good job. Arms out. Arms together. Lord God, thank you that we have an answer. Thank you that we have an answer for the problem that we have, the ones that we've created, and then the ones that have been around since we've been born. The separation between us, us and you, has been solved. You take the icky things away and scrape them off our heart and allow us to have a new heart that's soft and tender, that can be molded and shaped and made in your image. Love us, Lord, hard and keep us close unto you. Let us never walk away. In your holy and precious name, Jesus, amen. Jordan. Who, now raise your hand if you're Linnea. Oh, there you go. All right. We'll see you. You get to bring it next week. All right? Sound good. We'll see you then. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you.
Jesus, lead us now. Lead us now in your word and, and by your spirit. Help us, Lord Jesus, to see the beauty of your love for us, the promises you would have us cling to today, and, and may it be, Lord God, that the things of this world that, that want to drag us down and to hinder us will, be, will pass away. May it be, Lord Jesus, that your glory is seen. May you be glorified. May you stand on high. Speak now, Lord. We need to hear from you. And we need you to lead us for, for all of these things for us to understand is beyond us. May it be, Lord Jesus, that you bring today understanding. In your holy and precious name, Jesus, amen. I don't know that I've ever spoken and taught so often on the second coming. Um, between, between the pericope over the last few weeks and Revelation class, I think that that's something that uh, has been a constant theme. And I suppose as the, as the pericope goes, you know, this, it, as we get ready for the first Advent coming soon, there's often the focus of his second coming in, in that time of the church year. Well, that's partly what we're looking at today. And as we read through this, this is a lot of text. And I could have maybe cut it in half, but I felt that it was so important to go through maybe all of it that as it's all connected, and yet as I contemplated, I really wanted to preach on a different text. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is good. God is good. And regardless of if things seem to make sense or not, my understanding, our understanding, does not reflect truth. In fact, my belief doesn't validate God's existence, right? In other words, he exists whether I believe in him or not. Just because I don't believe in him doesn't mean he doesn't exist. So as far as God's truth is concerned, just because I may not understand it doesn't mean that it's not true. I may not understand how everything fits together, how the things of this world in today and yet in the future how they will all transpire doesn't change whether it will happen or not. So let's take a look at as Jesus teaches today in hopes that we can grab the most beautiful thing we can from this text. And that's the love of God for us. While some were talking about the temple, that it was adorned with beautiful stones and votive gifts, he said, so as he's standing there, place yourself in that time, place yourself in that context, and the temple was beautiful, but it wasn't as beautiful as the first temple, right? And yet it was still beautiful. And they looked at it and they were, they were admiring its beauty, We are so foolish. We are so foolish. For what is the temple a picture of? What was its purpose? Was the temple what should have been praised and glorified? Or was it a picture of something else? The reason for the temple the reason for the covenant, the reason for God's redemption of his people, and the way that that would happen was standing right in front of them. But they cared more to look at stones and gifts of gold and silver in the temple. So Jesus speaks, as for these things which you are looking at, 
the days will come in which there will not be left one stone upon another which will not be torn down. This connects to a further text later in this passage. There are so many things that we admire in this world and they're here one day and gone the next. And the value that they have is simply because we've placed value in them. Christ, the most valuable thing ever, is of a value that we have not made. We didn't say that that was valuable, so it became valuable, right? I mean, you guys have things in your home, right, that to you are absolutely priceless, that when you pass, your children will be the first ones to throw that thing away in the trash, right? <laughs> Many of you have already probably uh, moved those kinds of things to the trash so they don't have to. Value, though, while we feel and place it and it becomes subjective, what I find valuable is valuable. Christ's value is objective. It's outside of our determination. It's outside of my opinion. And yet it's fully for me. I suppose the question that they ask in verse 7 would be one that any one of us would most likely ask. I, I imagine my wife, this, this is my wife, in, in that you want to know more about the thing, right? So, men, maybe you're familiar with this. You run into somebody and, oh, I ran into so-and-so at the store. And... That's the whole story. <laughs> but your wife wants more than that, right? She will ask you more and more and more questions to which you say, I don't know. This is what, so as soon as he says this is going to happen, I can imagine that most of us here would do the same thing. Oh, really, Lord? Well, when is that going to happen? When will that take place? That's the question. Again, missing, missing who Jesus fully is. Let us, not, let us not miss the importance of who Christ is for the sake of something, some understanding or some piece of something that is so not important in comparison to who Christ is. So he answers them, so it that you are not misled, or see it that you are not misled. For many will come in my name saying, I am he. And if you're following along in, in your, your, your own Bible, what you'll recognize in, in a lot of study Bibles here, they'll put I am, and then the he is in italics, right? He. And the reason that is, is because he is not there in the Greek language. He's saying, many will say, I am, or specifically, I am that I am. Many are going to come and say, I'm the one. Many are going to come and try to say, like I've said to you, I'm the guy that all that stuff is about. I am, I am. Many are going to come like that, and they're going to say, the time is near, but do not go after them. That is the precursor of everything that comes from this point forward in the text. There are going to come a time, then, as in now, that people are going to say, I know, I know. And I pray that my own heart does not become like this. 
where because of understanding and knowledge, for some reason, I feel that I've been elevated. People will come, and they will try to determine the truths of Scripture. They will try to take the glory of God and understanding for themselves. And then they will say, the time is near. Well, Jesus beat them to that, by the way. Because from the very beginning, that's what's being preached. From the time of his, his baptism, it has been, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So the message that the kingdom of God is at hand, from the beginning of, in his advent, his first coming, in his ministry, and then continues on until his second coming, should not be a surprise. When somebody else says the time is at hand, our response really should be, it's been at hand for a long time. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and disturbances, do not be terrified. That's a hard thing to think about, right? Well, Jesus, you, it's easy for you to say because when you were living, they didn't have nukes. No, no. Do not be terrified. Expect certain things to happen. There's one thing that is certain. It is going to get worse before it ever gets better. How worse, you ask? Good question. Really, really bad. That's the best I can give you. Uh, worse than now. Always think worse than now. Until you see him on the clouds, worse than now. But these things must take place. The end does not follow immediately. So is it should I be surprised that those that heard this message from Christ's own mouth, that even yet today, the end has not followed immediately. And yet, the time has been at hand, and my redemption has drawn near. Even since then, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. If it is to get worse before it would get better, then I would suppose that that would be something that could be easily seen and understood. But to be facetious, has man ever existed in a world of sin where he did not rise against another? Cain and Abel, right? Jacob and Esau, kingdom and kingdom, fighting against one another. This has been the case for so long. The old Adam and the new Adam will constantly be waging war. Do you want peace? We find peace in Christ. But peace with heaven and earth will not be complete until Christ comes again. I want equality for every people, nation, and tribe. But we won't, we won't find peace. Not in the way that we so long desire because it is not of this world at this time, for this world is a world of evil and sin. I want my children to go to school and not worry that they will be shot. 
What if I took every gun away from the world? That evil heart would find a knife to stab them. Why? Because it's not about the tool. It's about the heart. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. And as, as long as I wear the seal of the Holy Spirit and I bear my cross, we will be a target. For they hated him. Before all these things, they will lay their hands on you, will persecute you, deliver you to the synagogues and prisons, bring you before kings and governors for my name's sake. But it'll lead to an opportunity for your testimony. So make up your minds not to be prepared beforehand to defend yourselves. For I will give you utterance and wisdom, which no, none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. <laughs> Isn't it funny that if Christ has asked me to walk in a place that he himself walked in that place first. But you will be betrayed even by parent and brother, relative and friend, and they will put some of you to death. All of them. All of them. And you will be hated by all because of my name. Because of my name. I try to teach my children that there will be people in their life that will hate them simply because they love God. There will be people in their life that hate them simply because they love other people. Because they will treat people equally, some will hate them just for treating people equally. We will be discriminated against and it should not be surprising. The Son of God, the one who's created every single thing that has given beauty in all the places of this world, including the snow outside, <laughs> was rejected and crucified. Should I expect any less? Yet not a hair on your head will perish. Are you afraid of death? I pray that we come to a place where we recognize that even when I die in this life, I move to glory as I believe in Christ that I will not perish. Though I will put off the flesh, I am still alive in the Spirit. How intimately are you known by God? Does He know your name? Does He know every hair on your head? And if God can know every hair on your head, maybe give a nickname for each one. What is there that he doesn't know? What is there that is beyond him? By your endurance, you gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Then those who are in Judah, Judah must flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst of the city must leave, and those in the country must ent not enter the city, because these are the days of vengeance, so that all things which are written will be fulfilled. Woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babes in those days, for there will be great distress, distress upon the land and wrath to this people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword, and will be laid captive into all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth dismay among nations and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. Men faint from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. 
for the powers of heavens will be shaken. Maybe highlight verse 26. I feel like that's today. Fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. There have been days when I wondered if I should have had children, for I don't know what the world would be like when they are my age and older. What world will there be left for them to inherit? What battles will they have to fight if these are the battles that we fight now? And yet I recognize that Satan has been doing the same thing for so long. It's just wrapped in a different package. It's the same death and decay as always. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is a really big, big transition in verse 28. When you see these things taking place, straighten up. Straighten up. Right? Gird yourself. Be prepared. Your redemption is near. So what is it when I look into the world and see chaos? When I see evil? When I see absolute stupidity? What is it that I should say? Oh, <laughs> It's almost here. It's almost here. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Do not trouble ourselves. It's almost here. It's almost here. Redemption. It means to be bought back with a price. When we moved, we wanted to make sure that, that all of our stuff came with us, right? Except for what we threw away, which not all that got thrown away was intended to be thrown away, I don't think. But that's another story. That's a different illustration. No. We weren't going to leave anything behind that was important. The dog got away once when we were at the hotel and I was ready to leave him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't ask that question. You know better. <laughs> so, but because it's mine, I'll be back to get it. Right? Jim Johnson tells a story when they were on vacation. I can't remember how many miles it was, but they left their child, and it was like 20 or 40 minutes before they realized, and they had to go back. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but 20 or 40 minutes, that's a long ways, right? Should I go back? <laughs> now I'd go back, but there was a period of time I could just make another. No, you always go back, won't you? Every time you'd go back. you go back a hundred times. You'll make a way, it doesn't matter how far. You'd go back. You've been sealed with a promise. You are owned by Christ himself. And he will come collect his things. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Something that has existed from the beginning for all time, that will never pass away, can never corrode, will always stand. God's word never fails. God's word will never pass away. 
be on guard. Be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissociation and drunkenness. I, I kind of wondered why he put drunkenness in there because dispensation, and in, in, I don't know what other translations may have here, but it means to be tossed about to and fro. This is not the kind of people God has made us to be. People who are tossed to and fro by every wave of doctrine, every single circumstance and different things. We are not to be the ones like the oceans we are to be the ones, like the lighthouses, that those circumstances crash on, and we are not shaken. The worries of our life will come and go. They will be big and small. They will come in all sorts. Guard, guard yourself. Guard your hearts, for they are not to be weighed down. They are not to be tossed to and fro. I suppose as, as I look at this, there are many things we can try to use to comfort our weariness. None of which make us sober-minded. One and one thing only. Everything out there that promises comfort, save God and his word, pass away. Short term. I know this from experience. You can drink enough to forget everything and never remember that moment again. But you have a headache in the morning and the sun still comes up and your heart will still be troubled. Guard. Christ and Christ alone. If you are his, then let yourself be his. All of these things will come upon those who dwell on the face of the earth. We cannot escape the will of God, what will happen, and how it will unfold. But keep on alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape these things that are about to take place, to stand before the Son of Man. I long for that day. I long for the day that each and every one of us, where all troubles and sorrows pass away, the concerns of this world becoming no more. And I get, I get to stand before the Heavenly Father, stand before His Son. What a glorious moment it will be. So stand up straight. Be on guard. Be unwavering. Your redemption is near. It's almost time. Cling. Cling to the cross. Stand. Stand before the Son of Man. And let us pray. Jesus, may it be. Grant these things unto us. Faithful are you. The things you've called, you will do it. Be in us what we cannot be. And let us know and stand for certain that your grace is sufficient for us in all things. God, your love is great. And I am thankful that I am owned by you and nothing else. Own us. Know us. Have us. Claim us. We are yours, Christ. Let us do it with a smile. Straight, upright, guarded, and alert. The world can do its worst, and you're always at your best. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Would you please rise? Let us join our hearts together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Almighty can do. Go in peace and serve the Lord.